So hi everyone. Today we would be diving deep into one of the most important topics that is which GPU should you buy and what should you look into a GPU before buying it for AI use cases. So there are certain questions that are looming around. I myself never paid attention to it ki okay what does a GPU really matter for. Now when I was looking for the hardware aspects of my new laptop that I bought for generative AI there are certain things that came to my mind and I thought of writing this out. Which GPU should I look for? Are LLM supported on all the GPUs? What features to look for in a GPU? Is 4 GB enough or I need 8 GBs etc. So this was all my queries and recently then I deep dived into and this blog I'm trying to explain you what are the different aspects you should look into. So the most important one is the CUDA and the Tensor cores. So understanding the CUDA cores is that these are processors for handling complex calculations in for gaming, rendering, etc. So basically CUDA cores can be taken as the core of your GPU. More CUDA cores generally mean better performance in gaming, rendering and AI workloads. Right. So looking for a high CUDA core count is better. Second is tensor core, dedicated core designed for AI and machine learning tasks. So do remember that CUDA core are morally generalized while tensor cores are specific for AI and machine learning tasks, primarily using DLSS, deep learning super sampling. Tensor core accelerate AI workloads, enabling features like DLSS. So this is a very crucial aspect that you need to look into that is tensor cores. How many tensor cores are present in your GPU? Next, as you can understand, CUDA cores versus tensor cores. So I'm just trying to make sure that you understand the difference between the two. CUDA cores are workhouse, workhorses of the NVIDIA GPU. So they are the generalist present in this uh, GPU while tensor cores are the specialized unit. So you need to have a balance of it and I think you can take a minor hit on CUDA cores if you want more tensor cores. RT cores, dedicated cores for real time ray tracing, a rendering technique. So basically mostly towards rendering of graphics, enables realistic graphics in supported games. High end GPUs have more RT cores allowing for better ray tracing. Uh, if you wish to run text based LLMs, I think this is something that you might ignore. DLSS, deep learning super sampling, an AI powered feature that upscales low resolution images to high resolution. Again. Not much useful if you're going to run just LLMs or do some rag stuff, right? It boosts frame rates with significant sacrificing visual quality. What is ray tracing? So these are all concepts that are related to GPU. It is a rendering technique that simulates realistic lighting, shadows and reflection. It enhances visual fidelity in supported games. So it's again a feature more for gaming. VRAM that is video RAM. Memory dedicated to storing textures, frames and other graphical data. More VRAMs allows for higher resolution, better texture quality and smoother performance. Clock speed, I think this is something that you might have heard of. Speed at which the GPU cores operate. High clock speed means better performance, no doubt about it. Memory interface and bandwidth. The width of the memory bus that can be transferred between the GPU and the VRAM. A wider memory interface and high bandwidth provides improved performance at high resolution. So these are certain parameters that you need to look into. Clock speed is important. Memory interface is also important. RT cores or ray tracing might not be that uh, important for you. Cooling solutions, I think you can ignore. It's basically like fans or heat sinks present in the GPU, which are for cooling. Better cooling ensures low temperature. I think this is a generic computer hardware. Form factor and size. Size is very important. So recently I will tell you one story. One of my friends bought a G4, uh, G RTX GeForce 20 series. I would remember. Unfortunately, it couldn't fit into his system. So do look into that. The size of the GPU fits into your system. Software and driver support. Nvidia provides regular driver updates. So that is not a big issue. Now coming to the core of the entire video. Key features to prioritize for beginner level Gen A task. VRAM, video RAM. Why it is important? VRAM is critical for loading and processing large AI models. Insufficient VRAM, you can't load the model. Right. Trade off, aim for at least 8 GB. Because right now, the way LLMs are coming out, I think 8 GB is the bare minimum that you should have. Else, you would struggle with loading the quantized versions also. If you can afford, I think 12 GB is more uh, future proofing. But I would say that uh, it would be a little costly. Tensor cores, as we already understood, it's very important for uh, the course for AI and deep learning and you can't uh, have a trade off on that. 
to the GPU with Tensor Core RTX 20 series or newer. Don't take GPUs that have a Tensor Core uh, before this. There was a series of NVIDIA G4, I think the 10 series, which has which doesn't support LLM. So do remember this as well. CUDA cores handle the general task. Look for a GPU with a decent number of CUDA cores, right? Because it's the general how uh, the working the general working of a GPU is done by CUDA. So this is something that you can't take a hit. Memory bandwidth, as I already told you, higher memory bandwidth allows faster data transfer, improving performance. Price to performance ratio. I think you might be knowing that GPUs are very costly. So mid-range GPUs like RTX 30 series or RTX 40 series should be your go-to solution. If you can't afford that also, I think the 20 series can get started off with. What to avoid? I think this is very important. GPUs with less than 8 GB VRAM. Trust me, uh, if you are going for a generative AI solution specifically, don't go anything less than 8 GB. GPUs without tensor cores, don't go for that too. You won't be able to run most of the state of the art models. Overpaying for high end GPUs, I think I would suggest you don't pay for top tier GPUs. Like for example, RTX 50 series has just now came in. You might not require it. So you can start off with the uh, low budget GPUs first. So this was our summarization of what to look into a GPU for AI solutions. Choosing the right GPU is very important, else you might not be able to do local inferencing. Right. Some of the summarization I would say is that have at least 8 GB. Look for the RTX 30 or 40 series. Avoid older GPUs without tensor cores or insufficient VRAM. If you have the right GPU, I think you would be able to run 80 to 90% of the models, I would say. Thank you so much. I hope this video was useful for you.